How to think of nothing. Swami Vivekananda said, Meditation is a sort of prayer and prayer is meditation. The highest meditation is to think of nothing. If you can remain one moment without thought, great power will come. But how to think of nothing? Let's understand this with the questions and answers of the great Maharishi Roman, who was a sage, born in 1879. What exists in reality is only the self, the world, the living beings and God are imaginary like the appearance of silver in a pearl. All three appear at the same time and disappear at the same time, the place where there is not even the slightest thought of I. There is the reality, there is silence. That is the absolute. That is the real you. Who am I? Questioning is the only solution to all the yours in the world. It is also complete joy. Everyone will follow only those things that make him happy. Thinking that happiness comes from something or the other, you follow it. You see where all the happiness comes from. The happiness you think is coming from objects. When you understand that all happiness comes only from yourself, and then you will always reside in yourself. Then you will never going to be attached with any worldly things. You will do all your duties, all your work but without any attachment with it. Who is the best among the devotees? The one who surrenders himself to God present in the form of Absolute is the best devotee. To submit to God means to remain constantly in the soul and not to allow any other thoughts to rise except the soul. Whatever burden is thrown on God, he bears it, when the power of God governs all things. Why do we constantly think about what to do and how to do it? Without submitting ourselves to him, we know that the train carries all the burden. So after entering inside it, instead of keeping our small load in the train and feeling comfortable, why should we bear the pain and carry our luggage on our head? Like the waves of the ocean, unlimited thoughts of accumulated sensual desires appear. When will they all be destroyed? As soon as meditation on Absolute becomes intense, those thoughts will gradually disappear. You will be able to see the difference between the Absolute and desires. You will start recognizing who becomes happy, who got different feelings. You will start recognizing your body. Now your all desires will be limited to your body only, so your desires may exist, but you will not attach with it. Is it possible to destroy the sensual desires that have been going on since ancient times and remain as mere absolute? Is this possible or not? Without giving any space to this doubt, one should constantly remain strong in meditation on the absolute, no matter how big a sinner one is. I am a sinner. How can I be saved, thus, if he remains humble, without lamenting and worrying, and completely abandoning the thought I am a sinner, and continuously engages in meditation on the Absolute, he will definitely be successful, good mind and inauspicious mind, there are no such two minds, the mind is the same, there are two types of desires, auspicious and inauspicious, when the mind is under the influence of auspicious desires, then it is called auspicious mind, and when it is under the influence of inauspicious desires, then it is called inauspicious mind. One should not be interested in worldly matters, and should not interfere in the work of others, no matter how bad other people are. One should not hate them, attachment and hatred, both are unacceptable. Whatever is given to others, is given to oneself. After knowing this truth, who would not want to share it with others, with the emergence of ego everything will arise, with the dissolution of ego everything will disappear. The more humble we behave, the greater will be our benefit, by controlling the mind. One can live anywhere. How long should one practice self-discovery? As long as there are sensual desires in the mind, who am I, exploration is necessary. As soon as thoughts arise, they should all be destroyed by self-inquiry in their place of origin. If one continuously remembers the Absolute till the attainment of the Self, then this alone is sufficient. As long as there are enemies inside the fort, they will keep coming out of it. As they come out and keep killing them, the fort will be conquered. You must exist to think, 
You may think these thoughts or other thoughts. Thoughts change, but not you. Let go of passing thoughts and hold on to the unchanging self. A man in deep sleep is devoid of property, including his body. Instead of being sad, he's quite happy. Everyone wants to sleep well. The conclusion is that happiness lies within the human being and is, not due to external reasons, to open the reservoir of pure happiness. A person must realize his true self. What is the path of investigation to understand the form of mind? What arises in the body as I is the mind? When one searches from where the thought of I first arises in the body, one finds that it rises from the heart. He is the source of the emergence of the mind. If one continuously thinks I, I, he will reach that place. Among all the thoughts that arise in the mind, the thought of I is the first, only after the first person pronoun has emerged, the second and third pronouns appear. Without the first personal pronoun, there cannot be a second or third pronoun. How will the mind become stable and calm? Who am I? The mind will become calm only by exploring. Who am I? The thought of will destroy all other thoughts and just as the wood used to burn a dead body burns itself in the end. In the same way, it will also destroy itself. Then there will be realization of the absolute. What is the solution to sustain the idea of who am I? When other thoughts arise, one should not pay attention to them, but should investigate for whom those thoughts arise. No matter how many thoughts arise, they do not make any difference as soon as a thought arises. One should immediately search for whom did this thought arise. The answer will be for me. When a person searches, who am I? Then the mind goes back to its source and the arising thought becomes silent with its repeated practice. The mind develops the ability to remain in its source, the mind which is subtle. When it goes out through the intellect and senses, gross names and forms appear, and when it resides in the heart, the names and forms disappear. Stopping the mind from going outside and making it stable in the heart is called being introverted. Letting the mind go out of the heart is called being extrovert. Thus when the mind resides in the heart, the I, which is the origin of all thoughts disappears, and the ever-present absolute comes to light. Whatever a person does, he should do it without the ego of I. When one acts in this manner, everything will appear before him in the form of absolute. Are there no other methods of mental control? Apart from introspection, no other means are suitable. If an attempt is made to control the mind through other means, it seems that the mind is controlled but it reappears. The mind will also become stable through yoga, but it will remain controlled only as long as the breath is controlled, and when breathing starts, the mind will become dynamic again, and will wander according to the accumulated desires. The source of both mind and life is the same, certainly, thought is a form of mind. The thought of I is the first thought of the mind, and this is ego. From where the ego originates, breathing also begins. Therefore, when the mind is stable, the breathing becomes controlled, and when the breathing is controlled, the mind becomes stable, but in deep sleep. Although the mind remains stable, but breathing does not stop, this is because of divine will, so that the body remains safe and people do not think that it is dead. In the states of wakefulness and samadhi, when the mind becomes stable, breathing remains controlled. Breathing is the physical form of mind. The mind keeps the life in the body till the moment of death, when the body dies. The mind takes the life with it. Therefore, the practice of yoga is helpful in controlling the mind. But it does not destroy the mind. Like yoga, meditation on idols, chanting mantras, diet regulation, are helpful in stabilizing the mind. The mind becomes concentrated by meditating on idols and chanting mantras. The nature of the mind is to always be fickle, just as if a chain is given to the trunk of an elephant, which is always moving. Then the elephant will keep walking, holding on to that chain, without trying to catch hold of anything else. In the same way, the mind should also be attached to any name or form of God. 
if it is linked to the practice of remaining attached to it, then he will continue to accept it. When the mind expands in the form of innumerable thoughts, each thought is extremely weak, but as soon as the thoughts disappear, the mind becomes concentrated and strong. Self-exploration becomes easy for such a mind. Among the gross rules, diet should be on control. Following these rules increases virtues in the mind, which helps in self-exploration.